Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, we're going to be covering the features announced at Tableau Conference for Tableau Desktop. Let's get stuck. Okay, so I feel like I have to start this video by a little sort of brief note, and that is about a sort of underlying tone and the comments that I've seen that, hey, look, uh, the keynote was great, but uh, didn't see too many features that are going to make my experience as a desktop author um, exciting. And I also have to sort of um, respond to some of those and say, yeah, actually, you wouldn't see any of those in the keynote. The keynote has never been that sort of venue for announcing those kinds of features. The place for those kinds of features are actually the quarterly beta releases. Whenever Tableau says, here's what's coming, and they give you a list of all the features, that's when we actually get to see what's in the product. The keynote has always been a piece about the vision and direction of Tableau. And I think in the last couple of years, when Tableau have merged devs on stage in the keynote, people have sort of merged the expectation of both of those into one thing. And so I always like to stress the keynote um, had subtle messaging to kind of say, look, this is where we've come from. Uh, this is what we're really proud and happy to celebrate. These are the challenges we've still got left to sort out. Uh, this is where we're heading, and this is what's in the future, right? That was that was sort of an underlying high-level brief summary of uh, of the keynote. If you if you kind of didn't get that tone, check out my keynote uh, explainer. I've already talked about this in a lot more depth there, uh, but nonetheless. Um, the keynote wouldn't be the place for that. And I think devs on stage being a lot shorter and being crammed onto the end of the keynote has probably led to this sort of feeling. Normally devs on stage would be longer and we'd see a lot more of these capabilities. That said, Tableau still showed a lot of features. So let's get into some of those and let's have a look at what they are. The first feature is the ability to edit the all text. Now this has sort of been a growing momentum in the accessibility space. Essentially Tableau has been trying to improve accessibility of its products over the last few years. Uh, Part of the capability that supported that was data stories, the ability for Tableau to essentially give you some contextual information about a chart um, using a, an extension that you add to your dashboard. Well, that also enabled capability for accessibility in the back end because essentially you can add one of these elements and those with visual impairments can use this to either use screen reader technology or just have better, more accessible ways of seeing the same information in more than one way. Accessibility is for absolutely everyone. And Tableau have added that capability to the data guide capability. So the data guide is a functionality that was added to allow authors to start to add context and information. Think of it as organizational and instructional metadata to a, to a dashboard. And now you can edit the alt text that comes with a dashboard. And this works across all the levels that you would expect. So the data guide works at a dashboard level. It works at a chart level. And it can also work at a data point level, except for at the data point level, I don't think you get the ability to edit some of the more granular levels of information. But at a dashboard and as a sheet level, it definitely is a way of adding uh, uh, alt text to these visualizations. So you can describe what's being shown and then leave the capabilities of Tableau to sort of summarize what's actually being said to something a lot simpler. So that's a really powerful capability. I'm really keen to see how this works. Um, I've definitely not covered accessibility enough on this channel. Um, the features have come out, but in essence, I've never just done a specific focus on the accessibility features. So I feel like I'm calling myself out here. It's uh, something I have to improve. So maybe at some point we'll get someone who knows a lot more about this than me on the channel and we can talk together for a while and try and dig through all these features. Um, that will happen soon. I'll pledge to do it before the end of the year. Let's move on to the next feature. The other area that was super interesting is images. Now, images had a lot of emphasis last year. We had a lot of features come through. We had even support for image URLs being loaded dynamically in the table. This has been a fantastic capability set. And it actually started with some of the capability that you could add to a dashboard. For example, you could use web objects to load images in. And so this has always been something that's been improving. Now, what's possible is you can use GIFs alongside normal images. Now, the imaging capability has been sort of one of these things that has been a little bit sort of uh, troublesome because there are some sort of very fine boundaries. But I've done a couple of videos on using an image service, for example, something like Cloudinary, to be able to add parameters to a URL and have Cloudinary do the processing of images in real time based on the dashboard. And so what that allows you to do is to make sure you fit within the requirements every single time. 
and it also scales because Cloud Nary have an API that you can use and it kind of works at the same scale that most people would be wanting to use images. Let's say you've got a thousand images, you can't be manually naming and organizing those images. They're going to be named after specific sort of assets in your data set and you'll have tags and IDs and metadata that you can use. And so um, this is a really good feature set because GIFs are now part of that. What it might allow you to do is to do some really creative work with GIFs. Now GIFs are essentially videos. Think of them as videos and in a really interesting way you could use that sort of basic functionality to do more interesting product shots maybe rotating product images you've seen gifs on all over the internet and so you you i'm sure everyone here watching this video knows exactly how gifs work and how they can be manipulated um, but nonetheless uh, really nice to see that that support's being added let's head on to the next feature now this is a basic one, uh, geocoding native inside of Tableau. What does that mean? Well, previously, if you had an address for an individual, an address for a business, you'd have to send that off to a geocoding service. A geocoding service simply takes that address and returns a latitude and longitude for that address based on a database that it's able to look up. So uh, that involves quite a lot of work and normally you've had to access paid systems to do that reliably and in a sort of repeatable way. Now the problem is, is that sometimes dashboards have very small data sets and geocoding is just not something that's, you know, people are gonna go out their way to add to their pipeline unless it's absolutely fundamental. And for the people who do have to use geocoding, let's say you're doing some geographical analysis, maybe you plot locations around a specific geographical area, and the actual location matters a lot because it's uh, part of your sort of business workflow, um, then geocoding is an inherent part of what they do, and those companies pay a lot of money for those services to do that reliably and to do it well. What we have here in Tableau is essentially a native capability to do that. So you can give it a column with address information and it will resolve the latitude and longitude onto a map for you without you having to go and do any geocoding. Again, this is one of those long requested features in the community forums and it's just so good to see it here finally in Tableau. Let's move on to the next one. This one's a brief one, VizArt. Um, I call it VizArt, that's actually the name of the pilot program, but it's just essentially new chart types in Tableau. And at the moment, there's a pilot on Tableau Public uh, where you can build a Sankey and a radio chart. If you haven't seen that already, go and check out my video on that. Uh, try it for yourself on Tableau Public. It's actually really interesting how powerful it is to be able to create these complex chart types using the simple interface of Tableau. It just shows you how forward-looking Tableau was when they come up with a system because the system works for new chart chart types today. Um, now the challenge of course is having those uh, systems adapt to new chart types that challenge the, let's say the business norms and the uh, sort of let's say push towards more the uh, Stephen McCandley's um, you know David McCandley sorry view rather than the Stephen view perspective of keeping uh, everything strict and, and proper. So um, it's a really interesting challenge for Tableau to solve. Nonetheless they showed a demo on stage so this isn't really new but this will get released at some point soon and that's how it was sort of pitched at conference so really keen to see not just how they release this but you've got to remember it was a pilot program for a reason I think what's really going on here is they're testing the infrastructure for releasing chart types more importantly they could be testing the infrastructure to allow you to define your own start chart types because fundamentally um, how does a company like Tableau uh, solve this problem they could just give you the charts you're asking for or they could provide the base level charts they want to make sure work fast every time and based on telemetry, they can give every other user, every other creative user who comes up with a new chart type, the ability to define charts using something like SVG icons and SVG technology to try and allow you to uh, define how an asset works on the marks, color, label, size, all of those standard things that we can define in Tableau, how those all map to a new chart type. So that could be a new way of doing it. And that's maybe what this feature set is. Let's move on to the last item here, which is about shared dimensions. For a long time, Tableau has not allowed you to essentially create uh, data models that allow uh, sort of, let's say, reverse references. So for example, in Tableau, you, when you add a data model, everything goes from one direction to the right. Uh, I'll try and put a, a, an image on screen and I'll just describe this a lot better with some documentation on screen and what's not possible. Nonetheless, Tableau showcased a resolution to this problem. So now you don't have to go out and keep adding the same table multiple times to get the result you need. You 
can just create a re reference back to the beginning or reference back to another table and Tableau will dynamically figure out the data model as you're working through uh, whatever data set you're working with. So this is a um, uh, an update to the data modeling capabilities, but I think it further pushes this capability forward and closer to its competitors in a pretty important way. That's pretty much all the features in desktop. Now, there will be other features. I always like to highlight to people that this, this keynote and devs on stage is not the definitive list of what's coming this whole year. Um, this is simply a little taste of some of the big items. And they are chosen for a very reason that they demo well and they're easy to communicate. Imagine something more complex that would take longer, it would just kill the vibe in the room. So the thing I look forward to is the uh, list where Tableau showcase what's coming in the next version of Tableau. That is really the shipping point for these products. That is really where the beta drops and you start to kind of see what's coming. And that's really what we should look out for in the next release. We might even get something that was announced at conference in that particular demo. And if you're ever interested in seeing some of these features, it's actually quite easy. Just join the Tableau pre-release program. Often they have programs within that pre-release setup to be able to try these things. And if you want to try something and you know that other customers are trying it, well, get in touch with your account manager, get in touch with whoever you need to. Um, if you find the right people and the right contacts within Tableau, you can often find your way to uh, testing and helping improve features that are either coming or have been released but aren't documented and so therefore you don't know they're in the product uh, to sort of get into it. So the, the, these are all the ways you can get in and help out. Um, get on the community uh, forums and make sure you give some feedback there as well. Those are actively being monitored and watched so um, go and check those out. But that's it. That's pretty much everything that was announced at conference. I'll do a separate video kind of rounding off my thoughts on the conference and we'll also do a, a tablet and commentary on the whole keynote at some point this week. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.